grasslands and ranching. Grasslands By definition, a grassland is a biome dominated by grasses. Yes, I'm sure that's a big surprise to you. The grasses are there because there's not enough rain to support trees. In North America, we have the prairie. Um, the Great Plains are full of grassland, either the tall grass prairie or the short grass prairie. And we also have the dry, semi-arid scrubland of the western United States. So what are grasslands good for? Well, obviously they're good for grasses. And of course, flowers, and then for the things that eat all those grasses. So there's an entire ecosystem that depends upon these grasslands. But the last time you flew over Kansas, did you see any roaming buffalo? I doubt it. As you fly over Kansas and look down, you see something like this. That's because grasslands are a great place for agriculture. And those strange patterns you're looking at are just the result of our irrigation. So the central part of the United States is the heartland. It is the breadbasket of the United States. We all eat the wheat, the corn, the, the soy, you name it, they grow it. Here we have a Kansas cornfield. You'll notice that Kansas is very, very flat. Recently, some geographers calculated that Kansas is not as flat as a pancake. It is flatter. I just thought you ought to know that. So what else are grasslands good for? Well, good place to put a house. After all, the human population keeps growing. We've got to live somewhere. So we use our grasslands for our housing developments. Here's a picture of Boulder, Colorado expanding outward into the Great Plains. What else? What it's really good for? Hmm. Let's think. Oh yeah. Well, if you're like me, you probably are looking at that hamburger and thinking, that would be mighty tasty. I wish I didn't like the taste of hamburgers, because it would be a better thing for my health and for the environment if I were a vegetarian. And all of you who are vegetarians, I salute you. However, like Mary, many Americans, I like the taste of a burger. And for that reason, people use the grasslands for their cows. Now, in the central part of the United States, there's enough rain so that you can even grow corn, feed it to the cows, and the cows do very, very well. But in western United States, where it's drier, it's not very good for agriculture, but you can still use it as rangeland because there's enough for the cows to forage. Cows, when they forage, like the water. Gee, there's a surprise. So they spend their time in the riparian areas along the streams. This has an effect. Here's Pinto Creek in Arizona in May of 1992. And this picture of the exact same location 2006. What happened? The grazing was stopped. So grazing has quite an effect upon the land. It's nice to know that the effect may not be permanent. Sometimes if you stop the grazing the land can rebound. What are the effects? Higher stream temperatures from lack of sufficient woody streamside coverings because it's only along the streams that you tend to get any trees at all, usually willows. Excessive sediment in the channel from bank and upland erosion. High coliform bacteria counts from upper watershed. Coliform, that's from the colon or the large intestine of the cow. In other words, cow poop has gotten into the water. Yuck. Channel widening from hoof caused bank slewing and later erosion by water. Change reduction or elimination of vegetation. In other words, biodiversity took a dive. Which is not necessarily confined to just the riparian areas. In this picture you can see that there's a fence going right down the middle and on one side there's been overgrazing, the other side not. So can grazing be sustainable? It's possible, yes. 
you can graze, maintain biodiversity, and an intact ecosystem. Certainly nomadic tribes were able to do so. However, right now, at least 75% of the rangeland in the world is in fair or poor shape. Why? Because people have been overgrazing, adding too many cows. Why do people do that? This is what you studied at the beginning of the year, tragedy of the commons. The fact that it's normal for people to want to increase their individual gain, even though in the long run it may produce irreparable damage and ruin it for everybody. We see that around the world, especially with semi-arid areas because they will become desert. In the 70s and 80s, the Sahara Desert grew at the rate of three miles a year. These were areas that were able to support grazing, but now can no longer do so. Why? Some of it was drought, a lot of it was overgrazing and overcultivation. Let's take a look at typical ranching practices. Most ranchers place their cows in a pasture, one pasture in the summer and another pasture in the winter. Now cows spend their time pretty much in the same place, usually near the streams, and they don't graze other areas. So they really do a job in one area, and the poor plants underneath them get eaten or trampled, but grasses are pretty resilient. They'll try to come back again the next year, but if the cows are still there the following year, and the year after that, then the grasses will finally give up. However, for years, bison and elk have come through the Great Plains, and they didn't do this kind of damage. So let's take a look at the natural system and see how something as huge as a bison could have come through and not damaged the land. In nature, bison would come through and they would trample the hell out of an area. The only difference is they wouldn't return to the same spot for many years, plenty of time for the grasses to grow back. In fact, it turns out that occasional trampling is really healthy for the plants. It pushes the dead plant material into the soil, increasing the rate of decomposition and returning the nutrients to the soil. So if you want proper range management, you can mimic natural grazing patterns. What does that mean? That means move the cows. That's all very well, but a rancher has got to make money. No one's going to try a new process like this if they're going to lose money. Ranching is a tough business. Well, the ranch in that previous picture was Red Canyon Ranch. It was bought by the Nature Conservancy in 1993, and at the time it was in pretty bad shape. That ranch, like most ranches in the United States, is not privately owned. Instead, it's a mixture of private land, BLM permit, state permit, and U.S. forest permit. The goal of the Nature Conservancy was to show that it was compatible to ranch and conserve. At the same time, actually improve wildlife habitat and still make a profit. Well, this is looking down at the ranch and as it turned out, over a period of 10 years, they increased the number of cows on that ranch. They harvested more hay, they made a profit, and they increased biodiversity. So it worked. All this by simply moving the cows around and keeping the cows out of the riparian areas. Sure, they let the cows trample one area, but the next year they trampled a totally different area. Not only were the stream banks healthier, but they found that the water table actually went up. Even during a drought year, the stream on the right was after having changed their ranching patterns. Why? They had more vegetation, therefore less runoff. And if you have less runoff, you have more infiltration. The water table went up. So this was a total success. And it's nice to know that this is possible. Some ranchers are beginning to catch on because most ranchers really do love the antelope that might come and play near their home.